Yep. So we're going to be talking about uh, long versus short spreads, really, and and the placement of those spreads and the exposure to the Greeks for those spreads, and and you know the the parity that exists between these two spreads. So long spread that's in the money is going to be the same as an out of the money short spread. And we're going to kind of walk through those, those positions and and why we use one over the other. Cause we've been getting a lot of questions of, you know, should I buy this call spread or sell this put spread? And when you look at those positions, they're exactly the same. The, the difference being uh, the bid ask spreads and also just where we are placing those to open and why we choose credit spreads at certain points over debit spreads at other spots. Beautiful. All right. So the basics here, credit versus debit spread, they're syn synthetically the same position. So put call parity, and this goes with the box uh, that we talked about last week. When you sell a put spread, it's the same value as a out of or uh, in the money long call spread. It's put call parity. So those positions trade at the same you know, max profit, max loss, they're the same exact position because of put call parity, which is another thing we'll, we'll talk about uh, tomorrow a little bit more in depth. You, these positions, same exposure to volatility. The difference be, being uh, between the, or between those two positions is where we typically trade them. So we talk about trading out of the money positions. We sell out of the money put spreads or out of the money call spreads. If we're going to do a uh, long spread, a, a debit spread, we're typically trading those at the money, maybe slightly out of the money. It really comes down to where those positions are being traded because we know they're the same uh, position from a risk reward perspective and and from their exposure to the Greeks in the money an in the money long spread is the same as an out of money out of the money short spread. The reason we choose one over the other is because of that the where those trades are placed, but also the bid ask spreads that accompany those positions in the money options. You typically see wider bid ask spreads, especially for those in the money short options. Uh, and so it really comes down to kind of a slippage on these positions. And we're going to take a look at those on these next two slides with GDX, which is a very liquid ETF. Um, so here we're just going out to January. I just picked a random expiration, did a $5 wide short put spread. So you can see short, short puts in the money at the 31 strike. The long put is out of the money at the 26 strike. This position bid ask spread is about 30 cents wide. You can see it at the bottom of the trade ticket here. So, you know, you've got it's basically a risk one to make one type setup, but you've got about a 30 cent wide bid ask spread. On the next position where we're doing the out of the money, or I guess half of it is in the money, but the at the money long call spread, you can see this bid ask spread with the same strikes. And these are the same exact position. If you look at the risk and reward on both these positions, they're within a, a penny of each other. You can see the bid ask spread here is much tighter and, and it's 14 cents wide. And I know this example is, is relatively tight. If you look at something like a CMG or, you know, a less liquid stock, you'll definitely see wider spreads than this. But if you think about this from a one-off trade of, let's say you, you have five cents of slippage, that might not be a big deal to you if you're trading one time. But if you think about this over a year or over a career of trading these spreads and you're giving up two, three, four cents on each spread that you're trading just due to wider bid ask spreads, that adds up to lots and lots of dollars, right? So if you're giving up five cents and you do a thousand trades, it's five grand worth of, of slippage that you're just kind of giving away. And this is the main reason why we choose to trade the at the money long call spread versus the in the money short put spread. That's one of the reasons along with kind of the dividend risk that comes into play and just the assignment risk that you could potentially be at risk of if you have those in the money short options. Mm -hmm. And this is really um, the decision that you want to make is what get you want to get the, the least wide or the most narrow bid ask spread. Uh, and that's generally almost always going to be with the out of the money options on the short side. Yes. Uh, so keep that in mind. Yeah. And this is it. You'll see way bigger differences if you're do looking at a fully in the money short put spread versus a fully out of the money long call spread. I mean, that's those spreads are about as tight as it's going to be. 
you know, being 30 cents wide. If you're looking at those same positions, but further in the money for the short put spread and out of the money for the long call spread, those spreads are going to be 40, 50 cents wide. So it's going to get even, uh, even wider though. So synthetically, an out of the money short spread is the same exact position as an in the money long spread. If you're selling the put spread, it's the same as buying the in the money call spread at those same strikes. Both of these positions, and I know we talk about short spreads being, you know, short volatility and long spreads being long volatility. It, it comes down to where those trades are placed. We'll look at that on the next slide. But both these positions, if you're looking at, you know, the par uh, uh, put call parity in the same positions there, they're both going to be short vega and long theta, even though you're buying that in the money long call spread. And it just comes down to the extrinsic value and where those that extrinsic value is. When you have an in the money long call spread, it has the same extrinsic value as the out of the money short put spread. So it's the same position. They have the same Greeks. The, the main difference being the bid ask spreads and also the the uh, assignment risk that comes with those positions, right? So if you're long the in the money long call spread, you have assignment risk on that on that short call. So you'd be potentially short stock that could come into play if you have dividend risk on that position. When we talked about the box spread on on Friday, we were looking at XOM, which has a dividend coming up. And that's why that spread was trading for, for more than the width. Same thing applies here. If you have a, an in the money long call spread, you could be assigned on that short option if you aren't careful. And if there is a uh, a dividend coming up and that's you know, why we don't sell in the money spreads or buy in the money spreads, because you can get that same position via an out of the money position. Going back to the question of implied volatility and, and you know, the, the idea that long spreads are long volatility and short spreads are short volatility, the IV comes into play with the position being out of the money, right? So out of the money short short spreads are gonna be short volatility where out of the money long spreads are gonna be long volatility. And when you when you think of that conceptually, it's because you're with your short out with your short out of the money spread, you're you're not really playing for price movement. With an out of the money long spread, you are playing for price move and for price movement, and and so you're playing for volatility to to be present. Um, it's all it's all due to which option is closer at the money. So when you're net short premium, your short extrinsic value, that short option is closer at the money. Your The value of that position is coming from that short option. The, the flip side of that, if you're trading an out of the money long call spread, the value is the value added is coming from that long option. The other option is your hedge slash basis reduction. On the short spread, the long option is your hedge to the downside. It defines the risk. When you're long a call spread, the short option is your basis reduction on buying that long premium to the upside. And I think this this next slide kind of dis, you know does a good job of describing these two positions and why we we trade them this way. So this short put spread, the one forty one thirty five. This is an apple. It would be the same position as buying the one thirty five call and and selling the one forty call. You can see even on on Apple, which is you know the most liquid stock out there on the on the put side if you're selling the put spread penny wide maybe two pennies wide on the in the money call spread you're looking at 10 or 15 cent bid ask spread so even in apple you're going to see tighter spreads with this out of the money position but from an implied volatility perspective and the Greeks perspective, this short put spread, you don't need the a move in the stock, right? The, the stock can go down a little bit. It can stay sideways. It can go up a little bit. You're playing for the realized volatility in this underlying to be less than the implied volatility, right? So you're, you're short Vega. You're, you're selling the idea that this stock is going to move a lot. When you're looking at the out of the money long call spread, you need that move in the stock to be profitable on this position, right? You're playing for implied volatility to be to come in or uh, realize volatility to come in much higher than what is implied via the pricing and the options. So you're playing for that outside move in the in the underlying, and that's why this position is long volatility. So it all comes up. It all comes down to where these 
spreads are are placed, where you're trading these these spreads uh, in terms of of your Greek exposure. And the reason we use one over the other is really just getting those better those better fills and and you know removing slippage from the profit or loss equation. Mm-hmm. And with a the spread like will never work in your favor too. Right. So like yeah. wider bid ask spreads doesn't mean that you're going to get, you know, you're going to be selling that that put spread for less. It's always going slippage is always a negative component to your P&L. Yeah, it's it's just like anything else. Transaction costs like when you buy a ticket for a concert, your slippage is the fees that you pay to Ticketmaster or whatever the mm-hmm. other company you're using is. So. Uh, the more you can reduce that, the more you're really trading the value of your assumption. And uh, we want to do that as much as possible. But I like that you brought up the fact that this out-of-money long call spread is a long Vega trade in the sense that, yes, technically it is long Vega from a Greek standpoint, but your expectation shouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to make a killing on this long Vega trade if volatility expands. What you want to see is you want to see this plus or minus 950 be under what actually happens and you want it to be to the upside. Uh, yes. And that's why it's a long Vega trade by way of stock price movement in your favor greater than what's expected. Not necessarily trying to make you know hundreds of dollars on an expansion in implied volatility. Uh, it's really not going to happen with a call spread like this if you're trying to play for an IV spike in a product like this. Yeah, and we know that spreads have very minimal exposure to the mm-hmm. Greeks, and it's less about the actual exposure to volatility because both these positions have very little exposure to volatility. They have a lot of exposure to time and price and less so to volatility. But th- this is more of an e- explanation of the the concept of these trades and what your expectation and what you're playing for in these positions uh, really is, and when you're when you're looking at those out of the money long spreads, you're playing for volatility to be to be realized. You need that volatility to to happen. And if you're trading something that's super high implied volatility, or if IV rank is super high, you're playing for that high volatility to that the market is projecting to be even higher than that. And that's why, you know, we prefer to sell those, those out of the money short spreads because we want to be on the other side of that trade. 